Ooh. Hey guys, welcome to Toy Shop. Today we're working on an Articat LT Gray 5000. Check this thing out. This thing's actually pretty sweet. Growing up, for some reason, my dad always had a thing for free airs. And having one in here is kind of cool. So my buddy's dad bought this, knows really nothing about it, and he brought it here, and we're gonna see if we can make it rideable. Right off the bat, looks like we're missing some intake boots. I guess probably the first thing we're gonna start with, see if it's got spark, and then we'll probably squirt some carburetor cleaner in the carbs, see if we can make it pop or anything. Probably check the air boots. The intake boots, that one looks like it's kind of cracking. We'll check that out. Make sure it's not gonna blow up. And yeah, just kind of give it a good once over and try to make it so we can ride it. Those were already loose. This one out of the PTO side looks a little wet. I wonder if we got any spark. All right, so I'm assuming there was no spark. I moved the plugs where I could see them and I didn't see anything. I'm looking down here. I don't know if this is a points motor. I know this thing's old, like three times older than I am, so it's possible it's points. So we might investigate that. I see a random red with black stripe wire here that's just cut. And I don't really know if that's supposed to be like that. I see this box says 2018 on it, which might be a year. But there's a bolt missing out of that. There's a bolt there. I don't know. The point should be under here if it's got points. There's a coil here that the recoil rope rubs on. I'm not a fan of that. Fuel lines look pretty old on this. I'm gonna assume no spark, because I didn't see any. And we're gonna pop the recoil off and see what's under there. Maybe the points just need filed a little bit. And we'll go from there. Worst case scenario, if I can't figure this out, we're gonna have to call the old man and he can come over here and give us a lesson on it. But let's try to figure it out ourselves first. I'm assuming the points you can see through that window. I see a stator in there and I see different uh, coil windings, but I don't see uh, points in there. Kind of want to pull a flywheel off to see. Hello? Hey, Fadja. Oh. Um, so this LT gray over here, I just got it up on the lift and I'm looking at it. Um. If it was, is it a points motor? Do you know? Mm, shouldn't be. Okay, it would be electronic? Yeah, they were electronic from about 73 up. Yeah, I don't even know what year this thing is. Uh, oh, almost, yeah, this is 79. Okay, so this definitely is not points then, right? Nope. Okay. Put seals in it? No, it doesn't have spark, so. Check kill switch. Sit up in the throttle? Yeah. Yeah, that's part of the culprit. They made them in that year that was hooked to the throttle as part of the cable. Okay. And they, were, and they were junk. Try and plug it on and see if you got spark. Red, is it a red turn handle or is it push up and down? Push up and down. Oh, it's a different style. Yeah, some of them you can't just unhook. You got a jumper. Well, yeah, this is not anything easy to unhook. You sure don't unplug it by a switch? Sometimes you unplug them, you gotta ground them, we get them to fire. That definitely wasn't being held in there by a whole, whole lot. Oh, the plastic's broke. Try it again. Oh, the bad thing is, is uh, I can't see. Sometimes you gotta watch, you can't just unplug them or break the circuit of the well, I'll try it once with it just unplugged. And then maybe I'll try jumping it quick. Hmm. No. What color wires are on the switch? Black and red. Or brown. Black and brown. You may have to fiddle around a little more. And I know some of them you couldn't just unplug. It was just, they had to carry the circuit through to get spark. Key on, or do you get any lights when you crank it? I didn't look at that. Nope. All right, well, I'm gonna do some digging and some Googling and see what I can figure out. I just followed this brown wire here from the kill switch into here, and this plug definitely looks like it's half unplugged. I don't know if that made a difference or not. Still don't see no spark. 
Well, I guess instead of just spitballing at the kill switch, let's check the stator first and see. I found this thing on Articat forum page online. And it's for 1980, but it's still for a Suzuki motor. So let's see. Um, it says the stator black wire with white stripe and the red wire with black stripe. 88.5 ohms plus or minus 10%. All right, right on the money at 88 and a half ohms. All right, lighting coil, yellow to yellow, 0.14 ohms, and it's bouncing between 0.1 and 0.2, so I would assume it's gonna be right at one and a half. External ignition coil primary. I'm looking for 0.33 ohms. All right, that looks good. I wonder if I can look up an aftermarket stator for this. Or not stator, uh, CDI. All right, I'm gonna assume this is what it is. See what it says. What is that red wire for? This looks basically, this looks exactly like it. Let's go back to try to find a wiring diagram and see what that red wire is for. So right there's the two wire that go to the coil. Right there's the three wire that goes to the CDI. And then the CDI is supposed to, is that single wire supposed to be grounded? It says black here, but that is clearly not black. I'm guessing it hurt anything. Try to bear that back and ground it out. All right, so I've done a ton of digging, but I found this wiring diagram online, LT Gray 5000, 78 to 79, that's what this is. For some reason, I'm missing this red and black wire, this single plug red and black wire. It's coming off the state or off the CDI but I don't see a single oddball wire coming out of stator. So I don't know if it's a pickup coil that is just not in there or something, because I'm missing a wire. I don't know what this goes in. Apparently somebody thought they could just cut it. I don't understand and I don't know what else to do. So we're gonna pop the recoil off, pop stator off and see what's in, in behind this, uh, the flywheel, I guess. That was way easier than I thought it was gonna be. I have a strange feeling that somebody else has already been in here because that stator popped off pretty easy. The, or the flywheel popped off pretty easy. And the flywheel also has original wrote on it. The word original wrote on it in Sharpie. I'm still kind of on the hunt for that missing wire. It doesn't make sense. Unless this just has a different stator in it altogether, but. If that's the case, then the CDI probably won't match. I ended up taking the exhaust off just because it was in my way. I was tired of fighting with it. Okay, so I have just gone down this massive rabbit hole. So I'm gonna kind of briefly explain to you what I did. Um, first of all, I was trying to find an OEM picture of this to see if that that random wire right there that I don't have on the stator to see if uh, see if I could verify that with a microfish, see if maybe there was an external pickup coil on here or something that I didn't know about or was missing out of this and maybe that was supposed to go there. This website here is Brown's Leisure World. I don't know, but they've got a microfish going all the way back to 1970 for Articat, so it's like sweet. So I clicked on the LT Gray Free Air and then went over here to, uh, what was it, electrical. And this was kind of like my first red flag. Hopefully this shows up on the camera. But if you look at the, how the bolt hole pattern is for the CDI on, on this little bell housing thing, it's going with the cylinders. And if you look at the bolt hole housing or the bolt holes on the motor that's in the sled, they go this way instead of this way. So I was like, why is that showing that weird? So then I started clicking on a bunch of different years of the LT Gray. If I click on 1980 LT Gray Free Air, go to electrical, it's showing me the same picture again, going with in line with the cylinders. But so I couldn't find a microfish picture that showed the bolt hole patterns on this bell housing here going this way instead of this way. But I ended up going down this rabbit hole and Googling a bunch of stuff and there's a tag on the motor right here 
and the, it says AD50F5. So I just Googled uh, Articat AD50F5 Spirit engine tag and this guy said that he bought an old jag 4000 and the motor in it says spirit 5000 ad 50 f5 and he said he googled it and it says el tigre free air engine 1980 i was like okay so they must have stuck this motor in the 1980s in 1980 i was like huh so I started doing even more googling and i found this thread here saying that uh uh, he's working on a fire plug CDI for the 1980 El Tigre. He said that he understands that this Nippo Denso CDI is a two year only 1980 and 1981 rather rare type of CDI. And it was only used on those two sleds for the El Tigres. And basically he goes on to say that they're super hard to find for the 80 and 81s but he's working on making one. So he's got a website here, so I clicked on this. Right here is the, the stator, or the CDI that he made. And if I look at the motor in this picture, the bolt hole pattern is going side to side, just like my motor here is going side to side. So I was like, okay, so it must be the 80 and 81s must definitely go side to side. Can I prove that a 79 also go set side to side. So then I did a little Google box in, and this is just, I don't know how much proof this is, but this is just an eBay motor. It says 76, 77, 78, 79. So it's not an 80 or an 81. And if I look at the picture here, the bolt holes go in line with the cylinders and mine do not go in line with the cylinders. Then I did even more Googling because I'm trying to verify that this is a 1980. And they said the first number on the VIN is the last digit of the year it was made. So zero would be an 80. It was manufactured for 79. I thought as if it was before June. It's June 6. I don't know, whatever month June 6. Whatever month 6 is. I thought it was manufactured the first half of the year, then it was that year. If it was after the first half of the year, it was the following year, but must not be. So this is a 1980, and I think the reason I don't have Spark is because this is a CDI that's supposed to work on the 79 and prior models, and it's not that fancy $200 CDI that will only work for this motor. In that thread where the guy was talking about how, how rare this CDI is, that's supposed to be on this motor. He also said the only way for this CDI to work is if you have to put in the 79 stator and flywheel in order to use the CDI. So you pretty much need to replace everything that's in here in order to use the CDI right here. I don't know if you followed all that. Basically, uh, I'm silly and I mis misread that and must be the previous guy did too because he got the wrong CDI for this. So I'm gonna make a roughly $200 gamble as long as the owner of this sled is okay with it. And I'm gonna order that other CDI and hope that nothing else is wrong. So, yeah. So I guess we'll see what he says. I downloaded a manual online and it showed me some things to try. I took the, the wire coming off the stator inside the motor and I took the black wire in the plug and I put that right to ground. That eliminates any of the switches, the kill switch or the ignition, the key switch. It eliminates all that. So I tried that and still didn't have any, any spark. So I know I don't have a bad switch. The other test I did was on the plug that goes to the CDI. You, I put my connector on the, the red wire and on the black and white wires. I put my multimeter on these two wires here, these two females, and I laid it here on voltage and then I pulled the motor over really quick and you could see the voltage go up and down. So I know that this is sending out some sort of pulse, which is good. If that, if that didn't send out anything, then I'd be a little more worried and probably lean more towards a stator being bad, but all right. I think that's just about everything that we can check. I'm gonna go ahead and order the CDI and when it gets here, We'll be back. All right, guys, it came in. This is the new CDI from that guy I showed you on the on that forum. I did order it, and it actually looks beautiful. It came with a kind of a little CAD drawing of 
what each wire color is and that brown wire right here is a ground so that just gets grounded back to itself but hopefully this is the ticket i'll leave a link for where i got this down below in the description all right the moment of truth let's see if we have any spark i still have all the kill switches and stuff bypassed here so hopefully Why does that not sound promising? Oh, I just had spark there. Why did I have spark? I had spark and then I didn't have spark. All right, I don't like the spark. I mean, we have spark now, which is way better than what we had before, but it doesn't, it doesn't spark consistently. So I don't know on read this note section if you end up buying the cdi because right here it recommends running another ground from like the recoil to the the tunnel just so it shares a ground so i think we're going to mock one of those up real quick and then we're going to try it again all right so i thought it was being spotty but i guess if you don't pull it over fast enough it won't spark which seems to be weird but if i pull it over fast we have good spark so I guess uh, let's see if we can make it pop on some carburetor clean. I'm not worried about the spark plugs not being tight because there's no exhaust on it or anything. I just want to see if it's got fire. All right, so one thing I didn't test was the, the coil. So I pulled up this manual that I downloaded and it says in order to test the ignition coil, I need to basically take my spark plug wires, take the caps off, and I need to put one test lead here and the other test lead here. And then I should be at 3,500 ohms plus or minus 20%. So I did this off camera. So it should do it again. I'm getting 1,445. And I'm supposed to be at 3,500. So I don't have nearly enough resistance there. So I ordered a new coil that came in. So if I test. What the hell, now I'm getting 6,500 ohms. What did I do differently? Well, of course now I can't make it read 3,500 ohms. Um, now it's reading 6,500 ohms and that is twice as much as what I need. But I tested it on the bench before. I just tried to do it on camera and it came out good. So. I think we're gonna pop these two bolts off down here and take this coil off and change it just to see if it helps our spark since I already bought it. So let's do that. I was not expecting this to be this difficult. I thought this was just gonna pull right off. Huh. Well, my CDI plug's not long enough. Do I have to flip my coil upside down? All right, well. Well, we definitely have spark way more spark now than we did maybe it will fire on this all right so let's see if we can get it to start Ooh. that's really promising That is good enough for me. Sweet. Oh, what a pain in the ass. Hey, we got it running though. Sweet. Oh, I'm stoked. The exhaust is still in here just like all caddy wampus because I headed out to work on it. All right, so to kind of recap, we uh, put this Hutech Electronics CDI on it. And I do think we still needed this, even though the coil ended up being some of it too. I think we definitely needed the CDI. And then the coil was what was giving us that weird spark, only if I pulled it over really fast type of thing. The only thing I'm not a fan of with this coil, which it's supposed to fit, is this wire that goes from the coil up to the CDI is super short. So I ended up putting the coil on upside down. And now the, the spark plug wires, I'm gonna dress these up a little better but they go underneath the recoil now. I don't know. 
I guess I could go up a little more. I don't really know what I want to do with those because I don't like how tight. I mean, it's not tight, but it definitely ain't not tight. I'm not 100% sure what I'm going to do with that yet. What I might do is pull the plugs back out just to make sure that uh, if I end up putting the kill switch and stuff back in, make sure we still have spark so that all our switches are good. And then put the exhaust back on. And then I have no idea how old the gas is in this. Actually, let's go check it right now. Oh, wow, okay. Oh yeah, there's that too. Gas caps broke. So if this sat outside at all, there could definitely be water in there. If there's water in there, I definitely don't want it in the motor. Yuck. It's like amber color. Airbox boots look all right. I think, uh, I think what we're gonna do, I'm gonna inspect all these fuel lines and stuff because I'm in here. And we're gonna, we're gonna suck the tank dry. Check all the fuel lines, make sure they look healthy. If not, we'll replace those. I think we're gonna pull these carbs off and give them a quick clean because I'm sure it needs it. Let's test the kill switches, make sure those work, get the exhaust back on it, and then let's start working on the fuel system. So I think next step is get the gas out of it. I've got this here fancy dancy air vacuum thing from Harbor Freight, and we're gonna plug this in. All right, I think that's almost all of it, and I got a full container of this. All right, let's get the carbs ripped off this thing. There's two pieces of fuel line in this one. It's a small one with a big one over top of it. I'm thinking we're changing fuel lines on this. This choke cable's broke on this one. Carb boot clamps and then they're coming off. I guess while we're at it, we might as well look at the piston. There's a little bit of scuffing on it, but it's not too bad. There's a little bit of scuffing on that one too, but. Nothing super crazy. All right, all right, so this is how I like to clean carbs. I got the PTO side here, flywheel set carb here. Got them laid out for, with uh, what I've got taken off so far on them, but I'm gonna probably, probably just tear one of these apart and show you guys. The other one hopefully will be similar. I did notice right here that there's a float bowl screw missing on this carb. This one has all four. I might see if I got a parts carb laying around somewhere I can steal a, steal a screw out of. But other than that, I just want to kind of get the old fuel cleaned out of these and make sure everything's good on it. And then we'll pop them back in. We do need to get a choke cable though. The choke cable on the flywheel side was broke. So, so that is on the list to get ordered. But let's get this float bowl apart. I've definitely seen worse ones than that. There's a little bit of green in it, but definitely not the worst I've had. Let's see how this one is. That one actually looks way cleaner than that one. All right, well, let's get everything out of them. I bought these little hammerless punches and they work awesome for float bowl pins. Makes it pretty nice for shooting out float pins. All right, um, so we got an air screw here, so let's count how many turns out it is right now. One half, one, almost one and a half. All right, almost one and a half. All right, so that is everything on that curb. So that body is stripped. We're gonna do the same thing for that one, and then we're gonna actually start cleaning. So we're gonna take this, stick it over the carburetor and start spraying it out. I wanna shout out Brooke S for buying this can of carburetor cleaner. If you like what we're doing here and wanna support the channel, then down in the description, there's a link to my Patreon page and you can support us by buying a can of carburetor cleaner. So I wanna shout out Brooke and thank you. So let's get this cleaned up. So I was gonna change all these fuel lines off camera just because all I did was put new fuel lines on, but I was putting the fuel line on from the tank to the fuel pump, and I started to split this, this plastic bung. We're probably gonna buy a new one, but while I'm at it, this just pulled right out of the tank. While I'm at it, we're gonna replace this line because it didn't look broke, but if you just take it and you just start to squeeze it, it will split. 
That's what happened right here is I just, it's just splitting. So this hose is junk. This is what happens when a fuel lines sit in gasoline for a long time. So we're gonna change that, but I'm not gonna have to go to the hardware and buy a new one of these. But other than that, it's gonna have all new fuel lines on it. So yeah, that's gonna set us back a day or so until I go get one of those. But after I get fuel lines changed, then I think I'm ready to throw the carbs back on this. All right, so new parts came in. Um, this new one here, I don't know if they just upgraded them or not, but this is an actual Articat part. But it's got a bung on each side here and it's steel. So I'll never have to worry about that breaking again. And then this was not on the original one, but I've seen these on a lot of vintage sleds. So I figured I'd get one to throw it on it. It doesn't hurt. This isn't a check valve. It's just a screen and a weight so that this will make sure it stays in the bottom of the tank and doesn't just curl up with the memory of the, of the new fuel line that's in here. So <clears throat> I don't think I'm gonna do anything to this, but just thread this in the tank here. And then I'm gonna try to pay attention as I'm tightening it to try to make sure that the fuel line is down naturally with the, the memory of the fuel line, but also I don't need it to be like that. It's starting to get kind of tight right now, so I'm gonna kind of try to keep going until I hear that fuel line flop around one more time and then I'm gonna stop. There it goes. All right, I'm gonna check inside the gas tank, see if I can see it laying in there. No, I'm just gonna trust it. We'll see if we get fuel to get sucked up when we top it off, when we put fresh fuel in it. I bought these things on Amazon because I wanted to try them, these little clamps. They're not the strongest things, but I was trying to find some type of OEM style replacement. Um, this fuel line is three eighths, I think, three eighths outside diameter, quarter inch inside diameter. And this is a nine millimeter clamp on Amazon. I bought eight millimeter too, but the eight millimeter clamp seemed a little small, but I just wanted something to help help keep this fuel line on here. I could have went with a little bit smaller fuel line and then really stretched it to get it on there. All right, all my fuel lines on there. I got a, got a fuel filter there. Runs over to the pump. And then from the pump, I got new fuel lines going out over to the carb. So, all right, the fuel line should be good. I think we're gonna do the choke cable next. So some things have happened and time kind of got away from me. It's been a, a month or so since I've worked on this thing. And uh, I did some stuff here and there off of camera, but I kind of want to go over, I'm pretty sure I got this done. The only thing I haven't done is test ride it. I guess I was looking back and where I kind of left off was doing the fuel lines. So I got the fuel lines on, uh, choke cable. I got the new choke cable put in. That was fairly easy. It just snakes up under the dash there. So we got a new choke cable. When I had it running, it, the headlight got really bright and popped and I just said screw it the voltage regulators were cheap enough on for them that uh, I just put a new voltage regulator on it and I put a new headlight bulb in it and it seems fine now the guy that owns this had another sled that had the airbox boots so I put those on it so those are good down here on the coil what I ended up doing was I ended up flipping the coil back around so that the the wires were down at the bottom again, but I ended up taking the, the coil that was on this and I cut the wires off and I spliced the longer wires onto these wires. So I did make the, the coil wires longer. So those go up here to the, the, the CDI now and I've got everything tucked back as best I can away from the recoil rope. There's not as many nice tie downs or anything around the recoil rope or the jack shaft there. So I've just kind of got everything laid out best I can. I did end up shortening up the spark plug cable or spark plug wires, just so this one here was that much shorter than this one. So I laid in there nice. I took the chain case apart and we cleaned that up and put fresh oil on that. That didn't look bad or anything. And other than that, I've got all the all the kill switches plugged back in. Everything works well. The gas cap. I had ordered an aftermarket gas cap. I think it was an SPI cap or something. And it was wrong. It said it fit this, but it was wrong. So what I ended up doing, see this is the old one. That's the old cork that has seen better days. But what I did was I took a pick 
and I went in here on the plastic and I popped the old plastic off and then I very carefully on the new gas cap popped the new plastic off the gas cap and it actually came up pretty decent. I just took my time and just slowly started to pry and pop the new plastic off. And uh, what I kind of noticed was this plastic is where it vents the tank. It wasn't glued all the way around. So I kind of just glued it kind of a little bit here and a little bit opposite of it. And I laid it back down in here. So it actually looks pretty good. While I had the glass off, I cleaned up the metal and stuff. It actually looks pretty good. You would think it would be aftermarket, but that's actually the original steel disc down in there and the original cap. I did end up putting new carb boots on it because the recoil side was getting kind of eh. And I think she's ready to rip. I think I'm gonna get this thing spun around so it's pointed out the garage door. And right now is the middle of May, so it is not optimal riding weather. But uh, I think we're gonna go put this around the yard a little bit, make sure the clutches seem like they're moving good enough. And I'm gonna call the guy to come pick this up. guys well there you have it um i hope you guys learned something from this uh hopefully if you guys had any electrical issues with your lt gray then this helped you guys out this project started out as kind of a tough one but uh, we ended up getting it i'm gonna try to post links for everything that i bought for this down in the description so go check down there and while you're down there make sure you hit the like and subscribe button but uh until next time peace